One of the most important aspects of art is the exploration of culture. What is culture? Our culture is the foundation of who we are. It's our identity, the way we look, the clothes we wear, the languages we speak. Our culture captures our values, our rituals, and our beliefs. Our culture can be defined by the places we live as our environments shape us in ways that connect us to them. Our culture is enriched by the foods that we eat, as cuisine is distinct in different regions. And our culture encompasses our traditions, how we come together to learn from one another, to celebrate with each other, to dance, to sing, to make music, to make art. Culture is the shared expressions of who we are. This year's art show, Artifacts, asks the question, what can we learn about each other when we study art? Artifacts are meant to teach us. While exploring and expressing our identity as at the heart of art education, observing and understanding the art of others provides us with information about the history and culture of everyone sharing our world. As we travel together through these digital artifacts, I invite you as your docent to learn something about others. And perhaps as art invites you, you may learn something about yourself. One of my favorite projects we do in third grade is our cultural color wheel project. It begins a deep study of color and value in the larger context of our units celebrating the art, history, and culture of African American artists. Before learning through the exploration of African American art about the erasure of identity during slavery, we celebrate the things about ourselves that make us uniquely our own while also coordinating images representing our identities with the 12 colors on the color wheel. I woke up to the morning sky first Baby blue, just like we rehearsed When I get up off this ground I shake leaves back down To the brown, 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 brown Till I'm clean Then I walk I'll be shaded by the trees By a meadow of green Oh, by the mile I'm headed to town, town, town in style With all my favorite colors Yes, sir All my favorite colors right. My sisters and my brothers See them like no
As often as possible, we make connections to other disciplines of expression in art. The following students extended their expression by writing, by adding explanations for why they chose the images they did. Ben P. I chose the boat wheel because I like boats and sailing. I chose the snake because I like catching snakes. The reason I chose the fish is because I like fishing. Why I chose the blue rectangle is because I like blue. Clay. I love all the colors in the color wheel because all colors can mix into other colors. Sienna. I chose a picture of a dragon because I love, love, love dragons. I also put an image of mom and dad because I love my family. I chose a book because I love to read. I chose a plane because I love to travel. Audrey S. I chose the fox because it is my favorite animal. The headphones are there because I like listening to music. The eight is because I am eight years old. Harper U. I picked the Eiffel Tower because I love Paris. I picked the elephant because it is my favorite animal. I picked the ballet shoes because it is my favorite sport. Olivia. I chose a blue mermaid because I love the color blue. I also chose purple because I love my mom and she loves purple. I also chose a green mermaid because my dad loves green and I love him. Audrey C. I chose a basketball because I love to play on a team and play with other people. I chose a yellow orange giraffe because in first grade we did a report on giraffes and it was fun and now I love giraffes. I chose a dog because I have two at home and I love them. I chose a basketball because I thought I should add another one. I chose an emoji because I love to send them to friends on my mom's phone. And I chose a flower because I love to garden. Riley. I chose a dragon because I love dragons and the How to Train Your Dragon movies. I love ninjas so much. I would like to be one. Basketball is my favorite sport, even though I'm small. I'm really good at it. I love unicorns. Gavin E. I picked the Chiefs logo because I love the Chiefs, and I picked the soccer ball because I love soccer. I picked the Rockies. I picked the Fanta because it is my favorite drink. And I picked the turtle because I love turtles. Lisa. I chose an acro mat to represent my love of acro. The image of a puppy is to represent my puppy and my spirit animal. I love my pup. Acro is a part of my identity because I've been doing it since I was four. It is so fun and I love it. I also chose the UCLA logo because I really want to go there for college and I love their gymnastics team. Clara. I picked a skier because I love skiing. I picked Pikachu because it's cute and I love to play Pokemon. I picked an eight because I'm eight and I'm real proud of it. And I picked a mermaid because it's what I want to be when I grow up. Also, I love their fins. Juniper. I chose Louisiana because I was born there. I also chose the leaves because I love fall. I chose a tent because I love camping. I also chose a bear because it looks like one of my favorite dogs. Charlotte. I chose a pineapple because I love pineapples so much. I also added a teddy bear because I love snuggling with teddy bears. Another thing I added is the number eight because my age is eight. Chase. I picked this baseball shirt because the Angels are my favorite team. I picked this crayon because I like to draw. I picked the Kansas City football team because I like them. I picked this dog because dogs are my favorite animal. And I picked this goldfish because I like fish. Mason G. I chose dandelions because I love the smell and also because it's my favorite flower. I chose Fortnite because I love video games. And I chose the Skylanders Giants because I used to love it. Spencer. I have the YouTube logo and a lot of YouTubers I like, such as Unspeakable, Jeffy, Ninja Gopher, and Infinite. I like games like FNAF, Minecraft, and Fortnite. Perry Grip is my favorite singer, and Doge is super cute. And a purple monkey because it is funny. I also like the Green Bay Packers. That is all I like. Harper I. I chose a yellow circle that says friends in it because I love, 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 love my friends. And I love, 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 love the color yellow. Layla. I chose a mermaid tail because I like mermaids. I chose slime because I like to play with it. 
I chose the ocean because I like to swim. And I chose braided hair because I like to braid. Gavin J. I chose a yellow-green Lemon Boy logo because I like their band. Elise. I chose a dog because I've liked dogs since I was two years old. I also chose an amethyst because an amethyst is my birthstone. I like music, so I put a music note on too. Liam. I chose a dab cab because I like weird things like that dab. I chose Rocky because he is cool. I chose that smile face because I'm usually happy. I chose Trigger because I love to play Skylander and he is one of my favorites. I chose Angry Birds Lego because I like them. I chose a squirrel because my favorite animal is a squirrel. I chose Beano's because he is awesome. I chose a drummer because I want to be I want to be one when I grow up. I chose popsicles because I like ice cream. I chose that weird blue bird thing because it is weird, like me. I chose a Minecraft skin creeper because I play Minecraft. And I chose bananas because I love bananas. Brooke. One of the things I love is sleeping. I love staying in bed. I chose a penguin because I love penguins, even adults. I added a lot of soccer images because I've done soccer for a long time. I love camping with my fam every year. Colton. I chose an owl because I like learning about them. They're vicious predators. I like them. I think they're cool. Peyton G. I put flowers because I love the smell. I also chose kitties because they're my favorite animal and they're so cute. I also chose the sign of my favorite football team. I also chose candy because I love candy. Last but not least, I chose a symbol for a vet because that's what I want to be.
In order to provide some perspective about this project, I wanted to highlight some of the components we studied while creating our Colorado Landscapes project, part of our comprehensive fourth grade unit on art in public places. This project looks at the artwork of Albert Beardstadt, a German-born artist known for his paintings of the American West. Atmospheric perspective is a technique of using lighter values of color for objects appearing in the distance and darker values of color as you approach the foreground of your composition. This is a technique artists use to create space, the illusion of depth on a two-dimensional surface. This technique of atmospheric perspective can be seen in Beardstadt's work. To begin this project, we started here in Colorado, looking at 14 mountains over 14,000 feet, and focusing on the unique ridge lines of each mountain. From these lines that we drew, we constructed our own mountain ranges and ordered mountains from lowest elevation to highest elevation. Students then mixed paints to create varying values of their chosen colors and blended either a sunrise or a sunset using the complementary color pair for their mountains. Our finished pieces were reflected upon with a haiku poem, capturing the beauty of our landscape compositions in poetic form.
hear the crystal raindrops fall on the window down the hall and it becomes the morning dew and darling when the morning comes and i see the morning sun i want to be the one with you just the two of us we can make it if we try just the two of us just particular scene it has a specific title um, what we call the nativity scene okay what do you notice about it think about look at what you're looking at observe it think about the details everything that an artist does is intentional just like when you're reading a book you read something you're looking for something called the author's intent why is the author writing this book okay there's artists artists have intent also what is the intent of the artist's work Okay, and in order for you to figure that out, you have to pay attention to details. What do you see? I see a tree that's in the wall. Okay, um, yeah, very faintly in the background, do you see that there's sort of some graffiti on the wall? And then there's a school, and then I think that says Pax. Um, that actually is peace in French, okay? So what you're reading are actually the words love and peace in the background graffiti on the wall, okay? Set in this nativity scene, what else do you notice? Details about the work. How would there be a love on the group? I mean, like, that was like BC, I mean, like BC, like BC. Hold on, this is a piece of artwork that was unveiled by Banksy on... December 29th. Oh, I okay, so this is this is the this is the latest piece of artwork that Banksy unveiled, um, and so there's meaning behind what it is you're looking at. It's a modern day take. Is the nativity scene set in front of a wall with graffiti on it? Typically, no. not typically. What else do you notice about the wall? Please pay attention to what you see. It looks like a cross with something in the middle. It look. What do you suppose that's supposed to represent, mm -hmm. Sophia? The Okay, but what do you notice about it? Look very carefully. What is that? that Sean? There's a hole in the middle. Uh-huh. And that means there's a hole through the bottom. Dylan? Um, there's like a, like the cross. Okay, uh, so this is supposed to represent the star of Bethlehem, okay? Mm -hmm. Which was the star that the wise men followed to find the baby Jesus, right? Um, and these are all historical. These are all historical things that we learn about as we explore this region that we're looking at in the world. Um, but we're, here's what I notice: How was that hole made? Please look carefully. the The title of this piece of artwork is called "The Scar 
of Bethlehem. So think about this. Think if you can activate any knowledge that you might have. Why is the bullet hole there? What does it represent? Okay. This is how you find meaning in artwork. You ask yourself questions when you don't understand something. You look deeply at what, you're, at what you see here in the detail. I want you to read what Banksy wrote about this piece of artwork. Okay, this was an article that I, this was an article I read over break. Um, and this, again, he unveiled this piece of artwork the day after Christmas. What does it say? Banksy wants people celebrating Christmas to consider what The elusive street artist. The elusive street artist. The latest work features a modified nativity scene. Joseph and Mary kneeling beside Jesus in a major bed. A major set behind a monstrous concrete wall. The wall appears to be pierced by a mortar shell. Okay, so this is what Banksy is saying about this artwork, and I'm just going to go back to the first sentence. Banksy wants people celebrating Christmas to consider what's happening in present-day Bethlehem. What do you know about Bethlehem? Thinking about the story of Mary and Joseph and Jesus, what is why is Bethlehem significant? Because Jesus is born. Okay, um, in in the Bible, the, the Bible talks a lot about the story of Jesus as Bethlehem as the birthplace. Okay. Um, and so it has a significant, it has significance in Christian culture. However, when we think about where Bethlehem is, does anybody know? Anybody know where modern, does anybody know where Bethlehem actually is? Roman. Yeah? Um, here's a map. Okay. Um, we're going to go through this little by little. Okay. First of all, the wall that was in the, that was in the shot that, that Banksy did. Okay is actually a replica of this wall that you're looking at here. This wall is around an area that is considered, um, that's considered the West Bank, or what is now considered modern day Palestine. But here's what I want you to focus on, is the wall aspect, okay? Because that wall piece that Banksy brings in is a separation barrier that exists, that was put up illegally, much like the Berlin Wall was, okay? The Berlin Wall was built by, like most walls are built, to keep someone out of a certain place. But here's the problem. I want to show you a map, okay? So you can understand what we're talking about. This is Jerusalem right here, okay? Um, this, what you're looking at is a map of what we call Palestine and Israel, okay? This is very conflicted territory, and we'll talk more about it later on. But this is what I want you to look at. This was Palestine in 1947, and this green speck is what's left of it today. What's happening? Just look at the picture. This is called visual literacy when you can read an image. What do you see happening? It's disappearing. It's, thank you. No, it's disappearing. Okay. If you notice the green, okay, what's happening to it over time? It's getting smaller. Okay. And what is getting larger around it? As we look at the wall in Palestine, okay, there is a conflict right now between Israel and Palestine. So they're fighting over who gets to live in this one little place. It's a very small strip of land, okay, um, kind of coming off of Egypt, which is why we're talking about it, because we're going to be looking at the art and culture of this place. As you can imagine, when people conflict with each other and they can't come up with a diplomatic solution, what do they resort to? Yes? They resort to war. Why is the bullet hole there? Oh, war. It's the, the bullet hole in the wall is to represent the fighting that's going on between people from Israel and people from Palestine who are fighting over this land. And this is the land we're talking about right here. This is the West Bank. That's what this is right here. Look at where Jerusalem is. Jerusalem is right in the middle of these two places. And it's a place that's being fought over right now between these two sets of people, the Israelites and the Palestinians. Okay? So the piece of artwork that we were looking at that Banksy is that Banksy made was to bring your attention to what's happening in a place that a lot of us have only heard about maybe in the stories that we've read in the Bible. Oh, sorry, here's Bethlehem right here. Okay? So Bethlehem is in conflicted territory. Understanding what's happening in the world helps you understand what's happening when you read a piece of artwork. 
okay? A lot of times you can't give you can't understand something if you don't have the context to understand it, okay? This is a very complicated, this is a very complicated situation, and we're not going to get deep into it. But what you need to know is that in order to understand what we were looking at here, it's important to understand the setting of where this is happening. And right now this this is taking place, okay? This wall is dividing two groups of people. And one group of people on one side of the wall don't necessarily like it, as you can imagine. They're isolated from their family, they're isolated from resources, they're isolated from other parts of the city, okay? So, I wanted to show you that because that was something that occurred while we were on break. It was a re it's a really neat current event that's wrapped into the artist that we're studying. This is why I love Banksy so much. He's a political artist. His art is to draw your attention to things that are happening in the world to make you think about them and possibly care about them so that you can enact change to make them better, okay? Now, speaking of doing things to make the world a better place, last week you guys chose an animal that you were going to, that you drew out, and I don't know where you are in the process, but everybody that I showed your artwork to, they loved it and they oohed and awed over it. Here's where I am, I am ready to paint, okay? You can use the pastels to blend and add a little bit of that blended pastel color, because when you paint on top of that, it's going to give it another layer of dimension. This is the last week that we are going to work on this in here as part of a class. Otherwise, it's going to be something you'll finish later on. Because next week, I'm going to give you guys surfaces for you to start your graffiti project. And as we think about those messages, we're going to continue to talk a little bit about conflict. Because your message is going to capture some kind of resolution to conflict. Why did he put love and peace on the wall? Why are those words there? Why is that part of the artwork? It's part of it because it has a reason. Do you know what the reason is? What do you think? He wants yeah. He wants, to, he wants there to be a solution that doesn't involve people, people shooting at one another. Okay? And there are ways for us to reach those solutions. Okay? They're called diplomatic solutions, where you solve problems by talking it out versus fighting it.